Teachers of Reddit, what's the craziest thing a parent has said to you? I don't understand why he's acting up in school. He's got the house to himself. 8th grade kid had been expelled from the district for 2 years previously. Turns out mom lived with her boyfriend in another town. The kid literally had the house to himself. This is really sad a great 90s movie idea all at the same time. I once had a student in my daycare class tell me about how he drank bleach to whiten his teeth. Of course, to me, that was concerning so I voiced my concern to his mother. She just rolled her eyes at me and said, he doesn't drink it, he just swishes it. I watch him. It's not like I would let him swallow it. What kind of a parent do you think I am? A pretty freaking bad one if I'm being honest. We showed a mother CCTV footage of her son stealing a teacher's wallet. The mother said that we had used our digital editing department to superimpose her son's head onto another student's body. We didn't even have a library, let alone a digital editing department. I had a parent teacher conference for a student that was acting out. Parents were not together and despised each other. Dad made it top priority to come early and let me know that his child was a one night stand baby, mom was a drug addict, and that he conceived a child with the devil. This was my first year teaching. I was a very innocent 22 year old kindergarten teacher. Later that year the child attacked a little boy's grandmother. I had a parent contact me with a question about their child's grades. If you're wondering why that's so crazy, I was a TA in undergrad physics lab. Had the same thing happen to me, I was a TA for undergrad psychology. It was ridiculous. Many years ago I taught at a university that had pretty liberal acceptance standards. So a student comes in with his mom who explained that he is doing poorly because he had a fever when he was a baby which gave him brain damage. The kid was sitting right next to her and I felt really bad for him. This is college so anytime a parent comes to a meeting it is unusual but this stands out as a really strange meeting. Not a teacher but I work at a daycare. We had a little girl come in boasting about her lice she has. She's 6. We called the mom to come get her because no trace of lice can be found before they can attend the after school program. When the mom came to pick her up she said the one rule was for you not to tell them you had lice. You want a kid to blab. Tell them not to tell anyone about something. I'm currently a 5th and 6th grade teacher. I had a student a few years ago who was a sweetheart, but would constantly miss school. She suffered from some sort of anxiety disorder. I had a real soft spot for her so I did everything I could to help, which included allowing her to leave in the middle of class to call her mom when she felt anxious, allowing her to sit and eat lunch in my room because the lunch room was too loud and hectic, playing games with her at recess because the other kids didn't want to, etc. I mean I bent over backwards to help this girl. Well. That year the student missed 87 days of school, and that's not including the days she came in late to the days she left early. At the end of the year we had a meeting with her parents to tell her that she wouldn't be passing to the next grade because of all the time she missed. I did inform her parents of this many times throughout the year. Her mom proceeded to rip me apart for not teaching her daughter enough, not giving her enough work to keep her motivated, etc. She would not even think about the fact that if you added up all the time she missed it would be close to 100 days of school. I still to this day don't understand if she truly didn't get it, or was legit mentally ill to think her daughter would be doing well while missing 3 stroke 4 of the year. Hey, teachers like you are how I made it through school. On her behalf, good work. I had a parent take me through the principal, the superintendent, and the school board arguing that I should take this kid's late homework over a month after it was due, and saying that the fact that I wouldn't take it has turned him off to school entirely, and I'm the reason he was failing. He had a 1.5 GPA before my class. The homework would have taken him from a 65% to a 67%. That's only if he got a 100% on it, which he very obviously would not have gotten. He was a junior in high school at the time. I wonder why you got singled out and not all the other teachers. I really hope your administration backed you up. Said they thought I had faked my chemistry degree. Admins did not support me either. Ended up having to take a somewhat informal test administered by a doctor who was another one of my students parents to prove I had in fact studied chemistry. Actually freaking happened. It was in my second year. 
This is one of my mother's many stories from 25 plus years at an inner city school. Kid is acting tired and weepy, says his head hurts. She allows him to lay his head on the desk and rest most of the day. She allows this on a fairly regular basis because lots of her kids aren't getting sleep at home police raids drive by etc. As the day goes on he's not acting like he feels any better so she goes to the office to call the grandmother, mother isn't listed. She gets grandmother on the phone and says xxxxx is saying his head hurts and really doesn't seem to feel well at all. Has he been sick? Did something happen? Grandmother yeah, ever since that car ran over he head, he been having them headaches. Bless your mother for being understanding and allowing a sleepy child to rest rather than reprimanding him. Not enough people realize that sometimes, school is the only place where a lot of kids can actually feel safe. There is a huge difference between lazy, disrespectful students and students suffering from stress and trauma at home. I didn't hear this but it was repeated to me by a teacher I worked with when I was a student teacher in an 8th grade class. This one kid came from a fairly wealthy family with a father who was always off on business trips. He was a good kid but would act up sometimes. The teacher, principal, and the kid's father had a meeting to discuss his behavior. In the middle of the meeting the father says something along the lines of, I just wish he had a father figure in his life. I later ran into the kid and his father at a fast food restaurant. The kid was super excited to see me. Father obviously didn't give a crap and barely looked up at me. Sigh that father came so close, yet so far with that little moment of self-awareness. Not me, but a friend of mine as a teacher, and she said that at her parent-teacher conference there was a grandma that came, and during their session the grandma blurts out, she's our pay baby, you know, nobody wants her, not even her mom, that's why I have to take care of her, just really unnecessary, and heartbreaking. She said the grandma was really callous and obviously didn't want to be there. My friend was born from his mother being gang up head. He said she told him once, I love you, insert name here, but sometimes I can't look at you because I see him. She doesn't have a bedtime, along with, of course, if she's tired in the morning I don't force her to go to school. I called home about a test grade, as I was required to do. The mother's only response was, I know my kid isn't butthole, don't call me again. I kind of liked the kid, I was just calling about a grade. That was my first year teaching, and it really changed the way I look at my students. I'm a high school math teacher. About 12 years ago in February I gave my students, freshmen, an optional assignment where they could write a two-page report on a historical black mathematician. I even gave them a list of about 45 to choose from. One kid turned his in and it was clearly copied and pasted. His loan source was Yahoo written in pen in the margins. The links from the web page he copied and pasted were even still underlined on his paper. I had already had a few mild run-ins with his mom. So before calling her I got a counselor to witness the call on speakerphone. I called his mom to explain the situation and to let her know that I would have to write him up for plagiarism. Her response, well you didn't say in the directions he couldn't plagiarize. The counselor and I just stared at each other dumbfounded. The poor kid didn't stand a chance with a mom like that. When I bought my house, I had to sign a disclosure saying I wouldn't cook em in it. I think it's people like this kid's mom that makes the most absurd paperwork for the rest of us. I teach first grade in a very poor area. We went on a field trip and the cost was $12 per student. We do have a fund set up for students who can't pay, but we try not to advertise that fact because then every parent wants a free ride. Anyway, I had one student who couldn't afford to go, so I told the parents I would take care of the cost. They immediately want me to pay for both of them to go as chaperones on the trip, another $15. I explain, very politely, that we do not pay for adults to go on field trips. Next day, they called to complain that I was discriminating against them because I wouldn't pay for their tickets. No good deed goes unpunished. So teach him better manners. Frick do I look like to you, a parent? I hope you did actually tell this parent that. Not something a parent said but rather what they did. When I was in 5th grade a parent came into our classroom while the teacher stepped out for a moment. I guess her daughter had been fighting with a girl in my class so she starts screaming at her in front of all of us then slaps the little girl in the face and walks out. 
we were all in shock and had no idea what to do at the time. I think I was in first grade when a psycho mum found me in the playground, took me to a spot the teachers couldn't see and slapped me around for scratching her son. I was a chronic nail biter, no nails. The kid who did it was his girlfriend, still angry after 30 years. I was teaching some girl who wasn't too intelligent. She was in bottom or lower sets for all her classes and generally being a pain. There was potential but she chose to be stupid constantly. At parents evening I told them the situation and her mum said so is she smart enough to get into a top university. Bearing in mind she was about 12 at the time anyway at this stage so I've no idea. Her dad immediately shouts at the mum and says I told you not to ask that stupid question. How on earth would Mr. Radiotron know that? They just ended up having this great big domestic argument in the middle of parents evening while I just sat there smiling politely behind my desk screaming internally. I freaking hated parents evenings when I was a teacher. I freaking hated them when I was a student. I'm not a teacher but I look after kids. There was one 6 year old who is struggling with reading and should read for 10 minutes every day with a parent after at all. And his dad turns to me once and says it's so infuriating when he just makes up words. It's as if you have to sit with him while he's reading no crap. I used to teach ESL in Korea. Had a parent call to request we keep the shades drawn all hours of the day as she was worried the sunlight coming through the windows was making her child's skin darker than the other children's. I wanted to tell her where to go but my co-teacher actually made me do this to please her. Most depressing semester ever. Parents in Korea are insane. One parent asked if I could whisper to her. 5 year old. Daughter. At least once a day. That I loved her. Apparently I wasn't giving her beloved offspring enough attention in class. After some incessant nagging. I did it once and immediately felt creepy and sinister. Why do you teach English in English? I'm teaching in Sweden, but still. So this was during a conference between the myself, the principal, and the mothers of two girls that had gotten into a fight. About three minutes into the conference, mother A takes off her shoe and throws it at the head of mother B. Pretty easy to guess which kid got the boot. Mother B's child got the boot, because mother A threw it at her and they kept it. I'm not a teacher but heard a classmate's mom say to her teacher that she made more than him. And therefore she was right. According to her, as long as he didn't make 10 plus grand a month his opinion didn't matter. 10 year old boy whispers to a 7 year old girl suck my dong. I told the mother about the situation and was trying to come up with ways to handle it in the program with her involved. Her reply was it's not a big deal. He's just being a boy. That was one of three incidents for the day. The other two were telling a younger boy he wanted to kill his parents and the other was when he punched a kid in the knee. My heart goes out to him and I am 100% sure it's his mother's influence. He's such a good kid with a great heart when he is away from mom for a period of time but when he goes back with her he's completely different. He is now getting help. Still struggling but I can see a bit of a difference. He's also involved in sports now and has met a male coach that has single handedly turned this kid completely around. To all youth coaches out there, you really do impact kids lives more than you could ever imagine. Thank you. I'm not a teacher but when I went to the school board office to register my daughter for school, the office secretary was on the phone. I was 10 feet away and I could hear the parents screaming at the poor secretary. The mom kept insisting to meet with the superintendent to get her son registered before school started in a month. When the secretary was finally able to get off the phone she vented to me a little. Apparently the delay was because the mom refused to fill out the registration form and provide the paperwork showing they lived in the school district. Holy crap this happened to me this morning. I'm a middle school orchestra director. Kids are playing a cool piece in a minor key that is called incantations. They've had it 4 weeks and we've already tested on it and everything. It is UIL season so they're getting ready for contest. Parent emails me up today and then immediately calls me. He's a minister and gives me the definition of incantation like I don't know what it means. And tells me I'm promoting witchcraft and demonic crap and all that. He tells me that I am exposing the students to satanic beliefs and that he doesn't want his daughter to even hear the piece. He banned her from being in the room while we rehearse. I am sympathetic on the phone but I can't help but be completely bewildered. I am not a teacher, but when I was little I used to watch the little Einstein tapes. Across the street, I had a friend, same age as me, that was held back for a year. 
His mother actually called one of the teachers saying that I was more intelligent because I watched these secret tapes. Being completely serious, the teacher talked to my mother about it saying how crazy it was. Weirdly enough those educational videos were shown in a bunch of studies to not be very effective at teaching. I had a mother come to me in May to contest the grade I gave her son on an in-class assignment from the October before. A high school senior who was gone, was given the assignment to make up, and chose not to. It took two hour long meetings between me, her, the principal, and the counselor before she finally relented. At one point she told me it was my job to keep track of his grades for him and to track him down and force him to make up missing assignments so that he didn't get ruined. 8 year old boy in my class would aggressively hit and kick classmates if they even looked at him funny. Could it be abuse at home or some kind of behavior disorder? No. His mother actively supported him to stop people who were making him feel bad and essentially suggested the 7 year old girl who got a black eye from her son deserved it. After she told him to stop kicking her chair. The best part is that this woman was a teacher herself. I asked her how she would feel if one of her students parents were encouraging violence and she said, well that wouldn't happen in my classroom, guess what, doesn't happen in mine either, her son got to spend a lot of time sitting outside. I had a parent call me to tell me that a novel I assigned, which included aliens from outer space, was part of a government plot to prepare our kids for alien overlords. She then went on ask if the author was a Zionist. I honestly have no idea what it was all about. Her daughter later told me that I was her favorite teacher, and that her folks were crazy. I know a teacher who taught second grade. She was collecting homework and came around to collect from a little boy who didn't have his homework. She asked where it was and he told her to frick off. She called the mother and told her what her son had said to her in class. The mother said what did you say to him to make him so mad? I said his mom was a bee. The incident that led up to the ridiculous comment, three days into the school year, I'm standing in the doorway of my classroom during passing period and a student on his way in turns in the doorway and dances his way through, very deliberately grinding his butt into my crotch. I reported it and the parent demanded to meet with me and the principal. When I explained and even demonstrated what happened, she said, he only touched you with his behind. You're making it sound terrible, like he touched you with his front parts. Hey idiot, no parts of your kid need to ever touch me. He was transferred. You've encountered the lost treasure of Captain Gus Fishhead. Subscribe to receive some of his gold. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.